Catalina Yachts is now the only American builder of fiberglass production sailboats, with more than 80,000 boats manufactured to date. Although Catalina produces boats as small as 8 feet under the Capri nameplate, the company is known for its production of mid-sized cruisers. Catalina sailboats are manufactured out of its Largo, Florida factory. Although the Catalina brand was built upon sailboats, the recently acquired True North line of OB motor yachts is now the company's focus. Rip Catalina. Time to get a tissue for your issue. It doesn't matter. Just because Catalina's gonna start focusing more on power yachts does not mean they didn't make some amazing models. Let's take a look today at the market and see what fantastic Catalinas we can get for less than 50K. Now I already went ahead and browsed around, looked into a few things. Some of the models I'm gonna bring up today are listed for a little bit more than 50K. That's just because the boat market is basically in shambles. It's a mess. Boats are typically about 40% overpriced depending on the budget. All right, first on the list we have the Catalina 310. Now this is on the small side for the 30 foot range vessels. This one comes in with a length at the waterline of only 26 and a half feet, a length overall at 31 feet, and a beam of 11 and a half feet. It's got a draft of right around 5.75 feet, and they were actually first built in 1999. So it's a smaller sailboat. It is a CEB rated boat, so it would be great for coastal cruising. With a vessel this size, with that small of a length of the waterline, in my opinion, it would be great for only a solo sailor. I don't think it would be large enough for a couple to live comfortably. Now, a lot of people are gonna comment down below, I'm fine on a 25 footer. That's fantastic, good for you. However, that's the exception. Most people prefer a little bit more room. So if looking at 30 footers, in my opinion, there are absolutely some better models out there. Catalina does make some fantastic vessels, and this one is coming in on the market currently for a 2001, right around $46,000. So if you can use those awesome negotiating skills and get it down to 40K, in my opinion, it would be fantastic for a solo sailor. However, because they are built in the United States of America, you are going to pay more for what you're getting based off of where it is built. All right, up next on the list, we do have the Catalina 320. Now this is a little bit bigger than the 310. This has a good length at the waterline of 28 feet, a beam of almost 12 feet, and a length overall at 32 and a half feet. Now because it's built in the United States of America, it does come in at more expensive. This one, the least expensive one listed currently is actually $60,000. Now in my opinion, there are other boats on the market currently where you can get a heck of a lot more boat for the $60,000 price. Now even if you negotiate Negotiate. Maybe if you're really lucky and you get it down to 50, still, I think there are better other boats on the market. But that completely depends on what your personal needs are. It's about you, your personal needs, and what fits your type of sailing, not my type of sailing or anybody else. You have to be selfish when it comes to buying sailboats. However, currently on the market, there's also the Catalina 34 MK2, which has a length of the waterline a little bigger at 29.83 feet, a beam of 11.75 feet, and a length overall of 34 and a half feet. This one is currently available on the market for 60K, the same price as the last one. So between the two, I think you would really need to get on them and see which one fits your needs better. This one, the 34 MK2, it's a little bit bigger, but not that much. However, you are gaining almost five feet in length overall. That does increase your running costs quite a bit. It's not dramatic, but it's fair large five foot in length overall increases your marina cost by five feet your haul outs and many other things that's always something to keep in mind when looking at these vessels compare the two and let me know what you think in the comments below which one you like the best now the mk2 is a cea rated vessel just keep that in mind this one is meant to cross oceans now up next, we have the Catalina 36 MK2. This is one of the problems I dislike about a lot of the Catalinas. The 36 MK2 only has a length at the waterline of 30 feet. It has a nice beam at 12 feet, but a length overall at over 36 feet. There's an over six foot discrepancy between the length of the waterline versus the length overall. Now it's a fantastic vessel. It is a CEA rated vessel. However, the least expensive one currently on the market right now comes 
comes in at $74,500. There, in my opinion, are a heck of a lot better boats on the market for that price. You are really going to pay a lot more for the name Catalina based off of where it was built. In my opinion, and with all of my experience, I do not think the construction or quality of the Catalina justifies that giant price increase. You are just paying based on where it was built, and that's all. Now, the Catalina 36 MK2 is a fantastic vessel. It is incredibly roomy comparatively to the other ones, but again, we've only got a length of the waterline of just over 30 feet. So realistically, you are not gaining much. If you go up $35,000 in price, you're going to get a lot bigger length overall. That's just going to increase your running cost. However, as far as livable space, you're hardly getting anything. You're really getting two feet or less. So in my opinion, again, there are much, much better options. All right, next up, we actually have a really good size one, the Catalina 380. It has a length at the waterline of 32.42 feet. However, again, we have a large discrepancy to the length overall. The length overall on this vessel is 38.42 feet. That is a huge difference between your length at the waterline versus length overall. The simplest way to think about this is the length at the waterline is basically your livable space. Your length overall is your deck space. Now this has a huge beam of over 12 feet at 12.33 feet and it's obviously a CEA rated vessel so it's built for blue water however once again you need to add all the little things that you need to make blue water sailing appropriate for the conditions so take a look at the Catalinas that are on the market let me know what you think of them now in my personal opinion you should know by now. I think they're a little bit too pricey for what they are. I think there's some better options on the market, but it depends on your personal sailing needs. Again, that is the most important thing. What is it that you need out of a sailboat and what type of sailing are you actually going to be doing? Now, so many people love to say, I need a boat just in case I decide to cross an ocean, but we gotta be honest. Are you actually gonna cross an ocean? If you are, fantastic. But the reality is it doesn't take that much of a vessel to do something like an Atlantic crossing. However, we always need to keep in mind the cost of that. Now you've got about four or five weeks in just an Atlantic crossing. That's a lot of time on the ocean. So your boat has to be prepped properly for something like that. So you might just wind up coastal cruising. It's a lot less expensive, especially if you're just gonna island hop throughout the Caribbean. My entire goal with this whole series is to get you into the right vessel that's gonna work for your personal needs. So we've got to make sure that we're being honest with ourselves about our personal needs. Now on tomorrow's video, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look at the Bavarias. I think they're fantastic vessels. We'll see what's on the market and I'll go over those. By the time I'm done with this series, hopefully you'll have a good basic understanding of a hat dozen of the popular vessels that are on the market and hopefully you'll be able to pick one that works for you within your budget. Don't break the bank and get something that's actually going to fit the sailing you will be doing in reality. Not the sailing that you're dreaming about, but the reality of your sailing adventures. So thank you so, so much for watching. If you can please, please do me a huge favor. Just leave a comment down below. Say hello. It really, really helps the YouTube algorithm and I would sure appreciate it. So I will see you on tomorrow's video. Thank you so, so much.